Welcome to our very special show, Space Probe 7, the making of the ultimate ride. And it is too. You know, it's the largest and the tallest ride in the world, and it costs millions of dollars to build. And it's right here at Australia's Wonderland in Sydney, the same place that brought you those other awesome rides, the Bush Beast and the Demon. Melissa and I, along with a few of the gladiators and some lucky or not so lucky prize winners, are to be the first ever punters to take a ride on Space Probe 7. And we've got the gladiators right here. We have Cheetah, Commando and Hammer. How you doing? Hi. Now, I understand you've been getting into the swing of things, you know, riding the Demon and all. We rode the Demon this morning. I think it took me two and a half hours. I wasn't feeling real hot. And they say that it's a piece of cake compared to Space Probe 7. Oh, are you nervous? I am nervous, and I'm not going on if you're not going we'll on. We'll have to stick together with this one. Commando, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I think the hardest part of the ride is going to be getting this boy on it. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the gladiators in action on the Demon. Because I can't believe out of 14 gladiators, I get lumbered into doing this. It's going to be fun. I'll let you know in about fun. two and a half minutes. Fun. We won't get me out of it. Doesn't want to go. <laughs> Right. Anyway, you ready to be dropped like a rock from the top of Space Probe 7 because that is exactly what happened. Yeah, now, yeah. You get, you get winched up 61 metres. That's about as high as a 21-storey building and then dropped in free fall. Now, it takes about four seconds to reach the bottom, accelerating around 100 kilometres per hour and reaching 4 Gs when the brakes are applied. Commando, I know all about Gs. Now, which way's the exit, guys? Uh, which is just like the force felt when an FA-18 plane goes into turf. And I'm leaving right in now. In a while. <laughs> But uh, while the gladiators come to grips with that, there's a fascinating story behind how Space Probe 7 was built. Construction began on Space Probe 7 about six months ago. Once the foundations were dug, work started on the base of the tower. Australian-made prefabricated tunnels that will eventually provide the pre-liftoff excitement were delivered and inspected before being craned into place. Details of combining a multi-million dollar theme park ride and a television station was taken care of by Linton Harris, who gives a tempting insight into the Space Probe 7 experience. This ride is about an emergency situation. You're going to experience this emergency situation in a, in a satellite tower. And, uh, and that's a news story. If that was happening in real life, that would be a news story. And, of course, what we said is, well, seven news would be the first ones there, so let's integrate them into the experience so where the consumer and the guest, I guess, that's coming out of the park is actually living the ride. So they're living the news almost. As Space Probe 7 started to take shape, a 200-tonne crane was brought in to lift the various tower sections into place. Initially, high-tech equipment was used to make sure every section fitted perfectly. Throughout the queue structure, we've been using uh, laser cutting for all the steel work to ensure that we've got clean edges on everything. And as the tower was reaching towards 61 metres in height, down below, the interior was coming together. Space Probe 7's 14-tonne canopy was completed at the base of the tower. After the engineers had done their sums, two cranes with enormous lifting capacity were brought in.
positioning the canopy was tricky stuff, with the project's construction workers keen to finally see this remarkable structure crowned. Having the canopy in place is great. We're really relieved to have it there. From a marketing point of view, now it creates that sense of anticipation, something we really needed to achieve. Getting, up, getting it up there today was a big deal to us. And overcoming the, the engineering difficulties with it, I'm sure that, that the entire engineering crew feel very comfortable now and we can move on to bigger things with it. Coming up, meet the special effects people who help make Space Probe 7 the ultimate ride. And we psych ourselves up for the big draw. Welcome back to Space Probe 7, the making of the ultimate ride. And let me tell you, your adrenaline gets pumping the moment you enter. Now, without giving too much away, when you first join the Space Probe 7 queue, you enter a maze of tunnels that takes you to another world. A world where everything is not quite as it seems, and the further in you get, the worse it gets. A team of experts was assembled to make this ride a terrifying experience. And one of those experts responsible for the terrifying tour was Roger Cameron. Roger. Well, it's a developing effects experience. I think we try to start the tunnel sequence with everything in control, no major problems, it's as it should be, the bulkhead lights are working, the neons are all working, and as you progress further down the tunnels, there seem to be more and more things that are going wrong. There'll be bangs and crashes, falling metal, the hiss of a burst steam pipe and steam hissing out, heavy fog rolling out of the walls, uh, across the floor, in the launch area, um, some air cannon effects and heavy fog basically. And what are special effects without eerie, ominous alien sounds? Created by sound designer Colin Tim. A lot of the art is in blending different sounds together um, so that you create a character for the alien with a combination of sounds. You can use just about any sound and make something unusual with it. Um, it's a composition process. You're composing with noises. Um, so it's design. Designing the right effect that creates the right, the right mood. Amazing stuff, but to give Space Probe 7 an extra dimension, a bunch of producers set about creating an information source of the future, a telecomputer. Could this be what the future holds for us, Nick? You know, like half TV, half computer, news stories as they happen, even ones about alien invasion? Well, a production company produced the futuristic news service, but in 1995, how did they know what a futuristic news service would look like? That either line has now gone. Adam, do we still have a line to you? Yes, and So what we did is looked at uh, the way computers have evolved in the past 10, 15, 20 years and imagined the continuation of that evolution. And we figured that computers are actually going to get simpler. The more sophisticated they become, the simpler they actually become to use. Please form three lines. Please secure all loose articles. Now, as for the actual graphic design of the screen, we figured that rather than becoming more and more futuristic, um, our vision of the future with, uh, you know, sharp graphics and things, we actually think it's going to become softer, more human, more friendly to use. We also put in a, um, a neat little gadget down at the bottom, a, a computerized automatic uh, transcription service. So for people with um, hard of hearing, a computer will automatically be able to take the voice of a particular um, a piece of vision and then automatically transcribe it into any language. The computer's functions were further enhanced with specialised animation and software programs. We can synchronise external events in the tunnels, lighting effects and uh, motion events in the tunnels, to turn on and off at various points in the video. Leading up to its official opening, Australia's Wonderland here in Sydney wanted to tell the world about Space Probe 7, so a TV commercial was made. The only problem was that when this commercial was filmed, only the first stages of the ride had been built, so a mock-up was made. Director Mitch McManus explains. The, the challenge was being told is a 220-foot tower. <laughs> The ride is dropping down that 220 foot tower, but the tower's not here yet. And the commercial's on air a month before the tower arrives in the country. Uh, so what we did is put the world on its side. And uh, you can see in the background, the tower is lying on its side. And we put the actors uh, 90 degrees, and everyone's sort of lying backwards. And as they, uh, as the camera and the tower move, they appear to drop away. 